imagine a future where batteries power everything from our cars to our data centers and AI supercomputers, where energy addition rather than energy transition drives an era of uninterrupted power. Sounds bold, right? Well, that's exactly the world we're speeding toward, and lithium sits at the very heart of it. Once hyped up by Tesla's first gigafactory, and made even more exciting by new White House occupants, this critical resource is now fueling geopolitical debates, big-ticket government funding, and the ambitions of everyone from Elon Musk to global mining giants. In this video, we'll explore what 2025 might have in store for lithium amid shifting U.S. politics, China's potential for a demand surprise, and the industry's long way to the top investment cycles. We'll break down why established producers, bold startups, and even oil majors are all doubling down on projects across Nevada, Canada, Argentina, and beyond. Will America truly become a net exporter of lithium by 2035, as some officials predict? Will battery and EV makers thrive without government subsidies? And can a post-2022 price slump really set the stage for a lithium reset with a massive upside? Join us as we dive into the breakthroughs, roadblocks, and grand bargains likely to shape the lithium market's next big chapter. And find out why you shouldn't count out the unstoppable force that is Elon Musk. The Lithium 2025 outlook starts now. Let's rock and roll. Welcome back to Rockstock Channel. It is Tuesday, January 14th, and I'm excited to be bringing you another year of artificial lithium equity intelligence. This month begins my 23rd year in business under the RK Equity banner, my 16th year in lithium, and 7th as a podcast co-host. I hope you enjoyed today's intro from our new colleague, Jane Battery Pack, who is a robot reading an AI-generated script produced from my milestone 100th anniversary issue of the Lithium Ion Bull, now in its ninth year of publication. I spent my Christmas break researching and writing this 20-page newsletter, which the real Howard Klein will summarize after this AI avatar Howard Klein makes some further introductory comments. But first, I'd like to note a bit of a refresh to RK Equity's collection of brands. For those of you who hear these podcasts in audio-only format, we have rebranded the Lithium Ion Rocks podcast to have the same Rockstock channel name we use on YouTube. So if you're hearing this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or other platforms, please make note of this change to Rockstock channel. Additionally, we have refreshed our branding on the X platform, replacing the at Lithium Ion Rocks handle to be at RK Equity Rocks. Please be sure to follow at RK Equity Rocks on X. And if you'd like to get the Lithium Ion Bull newsletter directly, please register your email at rkequity.com. And as a reminder, nothing you'll be hearing today is financial advice. Please do your own research and read the disclaimer at the end of this video. And now, the real Howard Klein. While China's EVs are taking over the world, America still leads in AI for which massive electricity requirements could prove to be a more important demand driver for lithium, which among other factors keeps me bullish lithium over the medium term. I will summarize in this video the main points I made in my 100th anniversary Lithium Ion Bull newsletter, which was catalyzed by a series of long reminiscing conversations with Lithium Argentina's chairman, John Canalitsis, last fall. Please check the show notes for a link to the full newsletter, narrated through the prism of Washington ACDC, and including more than two dozen links to source material for your further research. What have I learned over the past 5, 10, and 15 years to inform a lithium view for 2025 and beyond? Does Trump 2.0 and his entourage of self-made billionaire entrepreneurs justify mourning in America optimism that is still bullish lithium? Could Tesla's strong post-election stock price rally be a leading indicator for lithium as it was ahead of Battery Day in 2020? It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, with most lithium equities down 50 to 90% from all-time highs. But will we at least be back in black by 2025 or 2026? Make lithium fun again. 
American demand. Why choose lithium hopium in the face of a likely removal of America's 7,500 EV subsidy and new tariffs, which will raise imported EV materials, which could further reduce EV demand? Because Trump likes to win. Made in China 2025 is winning the global auto industry's future. 50% China new energy vehicle penetration. That's BEVs and PHEVs and EREVs. 10 years ahead of schedule. If Trump doubles down on the ice age, it's not a winning strategy. But betting on Elon is winning. Autonomy, FSD, full self-driving, robo-taxis, artificial intelligence, including Musk's XAI, data centers. The age of electricity requires uninterruptible power. BESS, battery energy storage system, solar and wind, plus batteries, plus some natural gas, are shaping a cleaner, more reliable path forward. CATL CEO Robin Zeng sees BESS to be 10 times larger than EV battery supply. BYOP, bring your own power. Google's December agreement with Intersect Power to build $20 billion in renewable energy and battery energy storage assets by 2030 that will be collated with data centers is lithium bullish. As is Biden's industrial policy for electric vehicles and batteries. It's actually MAGA. The EV battery cathode anode materials and recycling supply chain represents over 400 of the 950 new plants catalyzed by the IRA and other Biden legislation. And 90% of these are in Republican states. Newly reelected Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson is talking about a scalpel rather than a sledgehammer to modifying the IRA. The upshot? Major impetus for domestic EV battery and materials production remains in place, pending some policy tweaks. Meanwhile, North America's cathode supply chain is shaping up quickly, which will be a ready buyer for America's lithium chemicals. Redwood Materials in Nevada, LG Chem's new Tennessee facility, which will be the largest in America, as well as GM Posco and Ford, SK, and Echo Pro in Quebec, and Tesla cathode plant in Texas, and hopefully Umicore in Ontario will restart its project. All these pieces fit together to ensure the EV supply chain can scale domestically. That's demand. The supply side has been Darwinian. Two names, CATL and BYD. Since 2023, we've lived in a new world order, no longer a lithium oligopoly controlled by Albemarle and SQM but instead a lithium oligopsony controlled by China's two battery behemoths, which control 70% of the Chinese market and 50% of the global market. BYD and CATL have wrested control of lithium supply and demand and price, as well as narrative through their upstream vertical integration. They've been aided and abetted by perverse incentives negotiated between SQM and its Chilean landlord. As in 2020's lithium bust, SQM has exacerbated a rapidly falling lithium price, focusing on maintaining market share rather than managing production to a lithium price that would maximize government royalties and taxes, as well as its own profitability. So can you still make money in lithium equities? Over my 15 years following lithium, get-rich-quick booms and busts distort market expectations. Yet supply deficit logic persists, especially with the West's supply chain vulnerability to China. That's why Western governments, OEMs, big mining, big oil, and Western Australian billionaires have been writing big checks to lithium projects worldwide. Valuations on the RK Equity Lithium scoreboard at the end of 2024 were much higher despite the last two years' declines compared to the last cycle bottom in 2019, which reflects broader confidence in long-term lithium demand. And justifiably so. 
Lithium demand in 2024 was more than two times bigger than what most predicted back in 2016. And consensus lithium for 2030 is 3 million tons, which is 50% higher than the 2 million tons most predicted at the start of 2020. The second half 2020 marked the end of the last two and a half year lithium bust. Will second half 2025 mark the end of the current two and a half year lithium bust that began in early 2023? Big and small money has been flowing into lithium. A few examples, the Department of Energy's ATVM loans for Lithium Americas, a whopping $2.3 billion, and hopefully for Ioneer, also around the billion dollars, has been followed by export financing availability for companies like Vulcan Energy Resources and the European Investment Bank in Sabanya Kelleber. The Export-Import Bank recently wrote an LOI for Lithium Ionics Project in Brazil. Straight equity raises, as well as convertibles in large size, have been executed by Albemarle, Pilbara, Liontown. Private equity groups like Appian have invested in Brazil's lithium ionic, as well as Triple Flag joining lithium royalty into Argentina's Trey Q. Will Resource Capital have the same success cornerstoning the Siona Piedmont merger as they did backing Pilbara Altura during last cycle bottom? Expect more big money from Korea, which has pledged $38 billion to shore up critical supply chain, including upstream metals like lithium, announced last December. So going into 2025, what is the lithium narrative? With 50% of the industry unprofitable at the current $10,000 a ton, a rise to $15,000 or maybe $20,000 over the next year or two is likely, with potential spikes to $30,000 or $40,000 in coming years. In a bull bear debate at Benchmark Week last November, I argue that with a three-year view, a basket of lithium equities should reward the patient investor. But timing is tricky. Could lithium equities and prices drop further before recovering? It's certainly possible. Picking bottoms goes an old joke, usually results in smelly fingers. But Pilbara's Dale Henderson's investing a million dollars of his own funds buying on market late last year smells good to me for spodumene. Pure play producers are most leveraged to price. What price is currently embedded in the valuations of PLS, SGML, MIN, LTR, and SYA and PLL. Dale's diversification into Brazil via Latin resources also smells good for other Brazilian developers like Lithium Ionic. Will Brazil, Canada, and African spodumene projects like Atlantic Lithium narrow the discounts at which they trade to Western Australian projects fought over by Gina, Chris Ellison, and SQM in 2023? Conventional hard rock remains the backbone of near-term supply and should garner more M&A interests. Which new entrants like Q2 Metals might make significant discoveries and triple in value in 2025? Could advance older stories like European Metals Holdings and Critical Elements double this year like AMG partnered Savannah Resources did last year? I also like conventional solar brines in Argentina, which have received some of the highest valuations paid over the past few years. I'm bullish Argentina under Malay and see scarcity value in Lithium Argentina, Galan, as well as newcomer Noah Lithium, now that so many other producers and developers have been acquired. Unconventional sediments, geothermal and oil field brines also hold promise, but often come with higher technical risk and longer development timelines. Will Exxon and Imperial Oil and Equinor Coke crack the DLE oil field code in the Smackover and Leduc reservoirs? Or will they give up and walk away from lithium after five to six years advancing to feasibility study levels as Galp did Aurora Lithium? After completing a $60 billion merger with Pioneer last year and outlining CapEx spend of $30 billion in each of the next five years, might Exxon follow in Rio's footsteps and make a counter-cyclic $15 to $20 bid for Albemarle in 2025? Or is lithium Exxon's new algae? I think some of the biggest DLE winners might not be the resource owners, but technology and service providers like SLB and Arcadium, now Rio, backed Iliad. And speaking of Rio, 2024's big bull story was its $10 billion bet on Little Lithium's growth prospects. 
Rio sees this specialty commodity becoming almost as big as its aluminum business, and half as big as its copper business, and a full 25% of its ginormous iron ore business. Rio said more about Argentina than Quebec lithium so far, but I expect that to change once the Arcadia merger is complete. And following North American Lithium's successful restart, I see the Sionic Piedmont Merge Co. as following the journey of Galaxy and Arcobre to Alchem Livent and ultimately to Arcadium Rio. Expect consolidation in Quebec and Ontario over time. In the meantime, spodumene developers in those regions are trading at deep discounts like Frontier, Patriot, Winsome, Q2 Metals, and Critical Elements as well as Iggy Tan's merchant carbonate conversion plans at Lithium Universe. These offer potential for attractive reward for lower technical risk than unconventional projects, in my opinion. It's a long way to the top, but if you want to rock and roll, don't bet against Elon. Tesla Lithium in Corpus Christi, Texas, is going to make hydroxide from North American Lithium spodumene. This is just the beginning of a secure, scalable, closed loop mine to chemical to cathode to battery to EV to recycling supply chain in North America. Battery metals are central to the age of electricity. BESS, AI-driven data centers, and the broader electrification megatrend in EVs. If we're right about BESS eventually outstripping EV battery demand, then 2025 and beyond still looks very bright for lithium, despite the last two years' turbulence. Thanks for watching and listening. Please be sure to follow us on X at RK Equity Rocks, subscribe to Rockstock Channel on YouTube, and sign up for the Lithium Ion Bowl newsletter at RKEquity.com. And let us know in the comments your thoughts on our 2025 outlook. Where do you see the biggest opportunities in the evolving ecosystem? And as always, nothing discussed here was financial advice. Please do your own research and read the disclaimer at the end of this video. See you soon.